A journey of a thousand miles, it is said, begins with a single step. More than 10 years ago, a courageous move was made by a young yet insightful individual, Mr. Danny Angels, answering the call to address property requirements. Royal Kingdom Estate was established by its prospective founder and CEO, Mr. Danny Angels, and throughout the years, the company has faced its share of business obstacles. Nevertheless, through perseverance, this vision has materialized into a solution that has provided tranquility, assurance, and trust to numerous property purchasers. Today's time with the CEO aims to narrate our journey to you with the hope that it motivates someone out there today and allows you to recognize the company and its dedication to remaining the one-stop shop in real estate, even more so. Hi, RK family. We are blessed to have another wonderful day. Today, I want to share a beautiful story of how the journey, the RKE journey or the RKE story and my personal story, contrary to popular opinion that I was born with a silver spoon in my mouth, it is rather the other way around. How did I even start real estate? What was I doing before? And what about the impact? What about the challenges? We are going to say, oh, it's going to be unfiltered. So please get ready. As you are aware from my previous videos, I have been in various industries. I've worked in various endeavors. I've been in hospitality. I've done a lot of businesses that have failed before I encountered my calling. How did I start real estate? I was just going to buy a piece of land from a friend. When I go to the site, we develop this chemistry. I bought my land and eventually we started talking and one day he says that he wants to entrust the whole land that he has in my care and he wants me to help him sell because he's been gifted this land for almost a year and he's not been able to sell a single plot and coupled with my sales background he feels that I can bring in business. I accepted the challenge and guess what? This is going to be interesting because that was my first real estate transaction. I had this welder who was um, working on my car, who has narrated the number of ordeals he had to go through just trying to acquire a piece of land and build something for himself. I then told him that I have a very good opportunity and I want him to take time, do his due diligence. And then when he's satisfied, he can come to the table for negotiation. He did just that and he was excited. Within two weeks, he acquired the land, two plots, and I was elated because the man who entrusted the land with me had not sold a single plot for one year. And equally, the gentleman had been trying to just purchase a piece of land to build something for himself. And within two weeks, we closed the deal. We built uh, a fence wall and then he started developing the, the house. The satisfaction, the joy that I got from that, coupled with the small commission that I got, I mean, it made me so happy. And we began to work. I began to work with this man. Somewhere along the line, I realized that he wasn't being truthful. He was a bit shady. I would advise him, but then he keeps on. I mean, he won't change. And we had an issue where the same land that we were selling, there was a rival claimant who claimed that this land was granted to him by a different company so he went to the police station and then when we went there i presented my case as a broker the developer who had uh, given me the land to sell also presented his case when we left the meeting something happened and you know in life i've learned that sometimes the storm is not there to destroy you the storm is rather there to blow you away from the marie clay and place you on a solid ground what happened was that after the meeting, I got a call from the police chiefs and they said they wanted to have a meeting with me. This meeting with the police chief actually changed my whole real estate story. The success of my real estate story emanated from this meeting. They said listening to the statement of account of everything that we said at the meeting, they felt that I am a credible guy, quote unquote, but I was dealing with the wrong developer. That is why every time I tell people that credibility 
is the currency you can leverage on in business. They decided that they were going to connect me to all the incredible landowners within the country so that I would be able to forge partnership with them and then work with them. And they advised me not to work with any fraudulent developer. I then start now again, I'm a loyal person. I can't just leave my developer friend like that. I went back to him, sat down with him to change his ways so that we could work together. Because at the end of the day, you don't have to forget your past. You must always remember who held your hand when you were coming up. I went to him, I said, I advise him, but he won't listen. Eventually, I took on other opportunities. They granted me 2,000 acres. And what I did was to write letters to institutions like the security services, the breweries, industries, and I got most of them to enroll on a payment plan of two years. And I was just taking commission from the chiefs, from the owners of this land. This story actually encouraged me because I was making so much impact just as a broker. Mind you, even at this point, I was just a broker and I made good money from this. And I decided that it's time to evolve because the impact was getting bigger. And I decided that I'm going to start a fully fledged real estate company. I then got um, office space, paid for office space, started a loan. I was the accountant, I was administrator. I was literally everything. And to build that from just one person to over a thousand workers today, I mean, I give all the glory to God and the persistence, you know, to continue to evolve and grow organically. Let me not deviate. Let me come back to the main story. So we started uh, with just one acre, an acre. Uh, we sold it in a record time. And I was excited because the person who purchased this land is a Ghanaian diaspora. And this person had family members, duped her. Many years tried to invest in Ghana and was not successful. So she called me anytime and asked, Danny, are you still in Ghana? The Ghana that we left, the Ghana that people have been swindling people in land transactions. And I said, this is the new Ghana. And coupled with the, the money that I, the profit margin that we made from it, I was excited again. We went and acquired the further 10 acres. We had to do a barter agreement. We used car and the money to pay for some. And we again progressively grew the company from just one acre to 10 acres to, to 50 acres. And predominantly we were just uh, doing what we call land retailing. We sold in a record time. I am of the opinion that organic growth is better than um, artificial growth. And I want to advise the youth, there is no overnight success. Everything that you see, even us today as Royal Kingdom Estate or myself, it's a journey that has spanned over 10 years, over a decade. So, I mean, the challenges were also there. I faced a lot of adversaries, you know, along the journey, land grabbing, people scamming me. I paid money for 30 acres. I ended up not getting the land. There were times that I felt like giving up, but I persisted. And I mean, I want to advise um, young people watching or whoever wants to invest in real estate in Ghana. It, it's not that easy, but if you link up with the right mind, with the right people who can, you know, show you the way, the rope around how it is done, you can still succeed. And um, just like myself, who didn't start on a good note or who didn't have it all rosy, but I persisted and today we are here. I will later share in detail some of the challenges that I face along the journey, even as an indigenous Ghanaian in real estate or acquiring piece of land, what I went through, I'll share that in a later video for you guys. To understand what it is investing in real estate in Ghana, uh, thank you so much for listening to this episode. I'll catch you again on the next one. Thank you so much.